Hello, everybody. This is Christina Fasonic broadcasting live from Wheeling, West Virginia, where my tomato plants are flourishing back there. I had a little problem with raccoons earlier this year, but they, they haven't come back yet, but they will. I know they will. Anyways, tonight we have a new writer, and I want to bring on my co-host, Damian Dressick, to introduce you her to us. Hello, Damian. Good evening, Christina. How are you tonight in Wheeling, West Virginia? Pretty groovy. How are you? I am, I am fine, thank you. I, I We also have these rabies vector species lurking about. <laughs> rabies vector. good reasons to stay inside. Like you always do. <laughs> you I, have I, another I, reason. Exactly. <laughs> so who do we have reading? Oh, for well, I am super excited. Um, I, I, I um, am very pleased. We have the inimitable... Barbara Edelman is going to read for us tonight. And I have heard Barbara read multiple times and she always does such a wonderful job as a reader, but it's, it's her work. There is just, a, it's a, there's a, a perspicacity and a warmth to it. That is just, um, it's, 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 it's a quite, a, quite a treasure. Uh, her, her poetry collection, the, the, the one that's uh, the latest and, and wonderful uh, work uh, is called dream of the Gone From City, and that's from Carnegie Mellon University Press, came out in 2017. Uh, her chapbook's Exposure and A Girl in Water uh, preceded that. And her work is forthcoming or has recently appeared in Spillway, Pleiades, Talking Writing, and the Raleigh Review. She teaches writing at the University of Pittsburgh, and she also co-coordinates the Writer's Cafe. So if we could bring out Barbara Edelman, that'd be awesome. Okay, here she is. Hello, Barbara. Hi. I'm going to do my best to be inimitable and perspicacious, if that's even the right way to say it. Anyway, nice to meet you, Christine. No pressure, right? <laughs> Well, we are excited. Damien and I are going to disappear and give you the stage, and we'll be back when you're finished. Okay, thanks for that introduction, Damien. Thank you for coming on. This is called Beings Who Were Nancy in the Backyard and in the Dream. And it's in memory of my aunt, Nancy. <clears throat> and I am hoarse. The blonde doe behind the house was Nancy. And she held my gaze too long for a healthy deer. So I knew how things were, even before she dragged the crushed leg away like a dead animal she was hauling home. And then the hammer snout Siamese and his flat stare was Nancy. And the girls in denim at the mirror with mascara wands, who would meet no eye but their own, were Nancy, crowding the bathroom that was Nancy's. And the blonde nanny in the kitchen, who looked at me full on, was just one letter off, and so of course, also Nancy. And the poet, Joy Katz, who had moved next door, though she resembled her dachshund, was in this case, one who takes joy in cats, and thus Nancy too. And the action figure with the big head, and the geriatric poodle baby, and my mother, forgive me, and the fawn alone in shade beneath the fir tree. Um, this next one, the first time I came to Pennsylvania, was when I was a senior in high school, I went to boarding school for one year. I grew up in Southern Illinois. And that was a weird thing for anybody in my family to do, to go to boarding school. Um, so this is for a teacher of mine. It's called Modern European History. Mrs. Ralph, did you have a first name, Mrs. Ralph? If not for you, I might have slid beneath the desk, might have slumped in the hallway for a whole year. Instead, I read the newspaper when I couldn't sleep. Instead, I tied a scarf around my forehead, Indian, cobalt leaves on pale sky, and put on a green corduroy shirt and stood before the class with something like joy, without longing to dissolve into water or woods. But there, in your classroom, with its row of high windows, blue scarf around my head, I gave my talk on Trotsky from three by five note cards, his rise and his exile, his claim that all revolutions are verbose. Above me, the globe on a bookcase, to my left, 
your round face smiling. Below me, my feet in hiking boots. In front of me, the girls who scared me, who knew more than I, who could negotiate cities and makeup and subways and boys, who could swing their hair and lie, who'd lived in this secret America since birth in houses the size of ocean liners, amid social rituals I thought belonged to the 19th century. And me, senior year imported hick from the bottom tip of Illinois, reading, reading, reading to catch up on something I couldn't identify. Behind me, a blackboard and a desk I sat down on. Behind me, Trotsky and the swells of modern European history you launched us into. You were the question and the doubt inside the answer. You were the swell and the undertow beneath the swell. And when Stalin's assassin with his ice ax hacked Trotsky at his desk in Mexico, my classmates gasped and sat silent beneath their hair. And I floated above your desk and above his desk and above the revolution in the slow cracking open of shells before the snowstorm of adulthood. Here's the room and the window and the face already, after, always, and soon, Mrs. Ralph. Um, and this last one is a little pandemic shopping poem. It's called Lockdown Shopping. I have to do this fast, the world's coming to an end, says a man in the produce aisle at Aldi. And without a mask, I might at least attempt one of those smiles that feels like trying to move a mouth that's not your own before I swivel back to touching mangoes for ripeness. But the inside of my head today is noisy with warnings and with one line of the police song, don't stand so close to me. So I screech my card away fast as if to say, I'm not like you, which means I'm scared I might be like you. But once I'm safely in the soup aisle, I start to wonder how he's shopping to prepare for the apocalypse. And if the world is coming to an end, what should I buy at Aldi? Thanks. I, I would certainly say you were both inimitable and perspicacious. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this, this, I love that there's a line, the secret America, that there's a whole book there. There really is. Oh yeah. For me, writing a short story is like writing a whole book. So yeah. I think you better write it. And I love that, that business of I'm not like you, meaning I, I'm afraid I might be like you. See, you've got the perspicacious check too. It's, Okay. All, all boxes. Yes, we weren't the only ones who really liked that line. Cynthia chimed in that, I mean, that is really what it means when we try to distance ourselves from others it's because maybe we're afraid we, we are like them. That was wonderful. I don't recall the exact line, but when you talked about um, being like the the token hick or or something like that when you were. Uh, in boarding school. I love that line too. Yeah, the, the token hick, because um, I was from Southern Midwest. Yeah, that was a wonderful line. Oh, thank you. Um, and I wasn't really a hick. I was only like a partial hick. But, <laughs> um, but you know what you said about the distancing? It makes me think now that we're all social distancing, is that the, is that the statement we keep making to one another? Like, I'm not like you. Not like you, or I, I'm afraid I might be like you. Where is the statement? I have to do this fast. The world's coming to an end. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and what what do you buy when this is it? I mean, we're talking about our universities uh, and their reopening plans for fall, and it's like a you know a post apocalyptic time right now the decisions that are being made yeah it's very scary it is but on a lighter note chime in in the comment section and tell us what you'd buy at aldi if the world were coming to an end <laughs> i 
I'd like to know that. I want to know. I never leave the house. What would you buy at Aldi if, <laughs> if it were, you know? Wine. That, <laughs> I also don't shop at Aldi, so I don't even know what they have. Oh, <laughs> a little bit of everything and more. <laughs> well, thank you again for being on, Barbara. It was wonderful to meet you, and your words were you. fantastic. Thank you. This was great. Thanks. Thank you so much, Barbara. So what, what, I wanted to ask, so we have new work coming out. We have a vote for chocolate, Daniel. This new, what? We have a vote for chocolate, see? Chocolate? Okay. Yeah. Tra tra Trader Joe's, sure, absolutely. <laughs> oh, we have a chocolate at Aldi, show sir. That's oh. It's excellent, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so where, where can we see this new Barbara Edelman work? It's a, a, I have a poem coming out in Pleiades, whenever Very that cool. comes out. We will look for that. Thanks. Okay. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, well, we'll see everybody on Thursday where Jared Conti will be on our show and we'll learn more about him. He's from uh, uh, Pennsylvania also. Yes, State College. Is that right? State College. Um, I believe he's from Lock Haven. Oh, you're right. You're right. My mea culpa. I, I, yeah. I conflated you know, two college towns in Pennsylvania. Ooh, cookie butter. <laughs> What's cookie butter? I want to know more. Now you've really started something. <laughs> Okay, thank you. All right, thanks a lot. See y'all on Thursday. Bye. Bye. Bye.